Let's take a moment to talk about Pipeline XT. So as of Studio One version four, we got a new update to Pipeline, which is Personas' answer to incorporating external hardware into your Studio One songs. So I've got a song open here, and we're gonna take a look at setting up some presets and how to set this up to work in a couple different scenarios. First of all, we're gonna be taking a look at using a mono instance of Pipeline XT. And in this case, I want to be essentially routing my audio out of Studio One to my ADL 700 so that I can do a little bit of EQ and compression in the analog domain and bring this back in and have everything incorporate really smoothly into my song. So the first step when setting up Pipeline, in fact, let's create a blank audio track here for a moment. So I'm gonna go to my plugins and in my recent menu here, you'll see we have pipeline mono. Now, when you load up an instance of pipeline for the first time, you're going to be greeted with this blank display over here. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we set up our inputs and outputs accordingly. I happen to be using a Personas Quantum system. In addition to that, I've actually aggregated a Quantum 4848 to my main Quantum. The first thing that we need to do is we need to essentially access the audio IO setup. So in this case, we can enter either one of these drop down menus and you'll notice that we have this shortcut to our audio IO setup. Now the idea here is that we want to make sure that we're utilizing the inputs and outputs that we have within our interface so that we can get the signal out of the DAW and back into the DAW from our external hardware. So in this particular case, let's take a look at the outputs first. I've got a couple different ones set up. We're going to take a look at two different examples within this video. The first one that we're going to talk about is my ADL 700. So the ADL 700 being a mono channel strip, I essentially only need to designate one output. So in that case, I've just chosen line out one on my main quantum to be the output. Now, in addition to that, I've also named this ADL 700 send. So it's a little bit more transparent in terms of what it is that that output's being used for. Now on the input side, we also have to designate a return for our ADL 700 as well. So in this case, I've used my input three and this is running line level and I've also named this ADL 700 return. So if I was setting this up from scratch, for example, I could go ahead and choose the proper send and return and now essentially I'd be good to go. But let's talk about a couple other things really quickly. While we can make some notes in this, so for example, I could say, all right, well, this might be, for example, an 1176. And then in addition to that, we could also make some notes of our preset. So maybe I would want to say something like attack would be at 10 o'clock. And maybe I want to say that the release would be at two o'clock. So directly from within pipeline, we can give ourselves some notes in terms of our external processing. Now let's go ahead though and remove this device because I've already gone ahead and set this up. So if we take a look at our main track over here, I have an instance of pipeline XT that's been set up. Now we have our send set to the ADL 700. We have a return set to the ADL 700 return, which we've set up in our audio IO setup. Now, a couple other things I wanna point out is that this is all automatically compensated for. So if you do something like, for example, change your device block size, let's change that from 64 to 128, you notice that this number here has changed. If I brought this from 128 back to, for example, 32, click okay, we'll notice that this has changed again. Now, any time that you have, for example, set a manual offset at any given point in time, Clicking this auto button will automatically realign the signal so that you won't have any phasing and any latency compensation that's happening within this plugin is going to be sample accurate. Now, once you've gone ahead and set this up, this is simply a matter of making your adjustments on your hardware. And we can now see that I'm actually processing this lead vocal channel through my ADL 700 in the analog domain. Ya no me quedan ganas de gastar el tiempo. Así que toma tus cosas, recoge, vete de mi lado. Now we can do some other basic things in terms of I can increase the amount that I'm sending to the external hardware or I can back off of the return. In addition to that, we can flip the phase over here by this button. And we also have a dry, wet blend knob that we can use as well. So if you wanted to do some aggressive processing in the analog domain and blend in the original signal, that's something we can do as well. Now, in terms of some other options we have over here, we can have a look at the difference of these two signals. We can also adjust our zoom setting. We can adjust the speed at which the waveform display is updating. And then last but not least, we also have the option to bring in a picture. 
So in terms of the picture, we can actually take a picture on a phone and bring it over to our computer system. And then essentially it's just a drag and drop directly from a finder or an explorer window right into the actual GUI. Now, because I'm using an ADL 700 and because Personas has actually made a plugin version of that, I've actually gone ahead and just manually adjusted all of these parameters to exactly match what my ADL 700 is doing. So for example, my compression ratio, any thresholds, my attack and my release settings, my overall makeup gain, all of my EQ settings that are making up this sound. And I actually took a screenshot of this. So let's go ahead now and have a look at how we would go about bringing that in. I'm just gonna bring in a finder window right over here. I'm gonna to navigate to my desktop and you can see that I have this picture over here, ADL 700 settings. So let's just open up the GUI and we'll open up our finder window. And I can actually drag this right in to my GUI, let go. And now I have these settings over here. Now I can toggle between showing the image and showing the basic waveform display as well. But at any given point in time, a single click here will bring this out into the full resolution image so that I could easily recall these settings if I needed to. And then again, a single click will bring us back out. So that is setting up Pipeline XT in a mono configuration. Let's have a really quick look at the stereo configuration because there's a couple things that are slightly different when it comes to the stereo version. Now, right off the bat, one thing I want to point out is you may notice that the actual name of this plugin in my effects chain is ADL 700 versus Pipeline Mono. That's because when I saved this preset, I renamed this actual device to be the analog device that I wanted it to be. What happens then is if I'm dragging in a preset, for example, from my browser, that not only will it bring in the preset, but it will also name the actual effects plugin according to the name I've given it. So for example, let's take a look at this first one over here. This is a stereo version of Pipeline XT. We'll go ahead and drag this in. So first things first, you'll notice that our send and return is actually blank. Let's reset these. I've already gone ahead and made sure that I named my send and return in my audio IO setup. So we can choose Alesis Stereo Send. And in my return, I will choose Alesis Stereo Return. Now, because this is actually an unbalanced piece of equipment, I've also gone into my universal control setup on my main quantum. And you'll note that my inputs five and six, which is what I'm using to bring this signal back in, I've set these to be unbalanced. Now, in addition to that, it's also worth noting that we don't have to use parallel pairs of inputs and outputs. So for example, if we open up my audio IO setup, you'll notice that on the input side, I'm using my main quantum so that I can set the impedance to unbalanced or minus 10. But in terms of the outputs, I'm actually using line out one, two of my quantum 4848 to send this signal to my external processor. Now, one other thing I want to point out really quickly is that you'll notice this offset over here. So if you find yourself in the situation where you're using a hardware processor of some sort that has its own built-in analog to digital and digital to analog converters, then those are gonna introduce some sort of latency. And this isn't something that's necessarily reported by a driver the way in which we have with our audio interfaces. So this is something that needs to be accounted for as well. And the main thing that you need to concern yourself with here is that you wanna make sure that you bypass your external hardware and you're gonna choose this automatic mode. Now this is gonna send a ping out and it will automatically set the proper offset so that if there's anything outside of your audio interface, such as the latency compensation that's happening on your external digital processor, then that's gonna be accounted for. So in this case, I've already gone ahead and done that. So now if we take a look at this file over here and I go ahead and solo this out. Of course, we could use our dry mix blend if we were using this directly as an insert. Maybe I'll scroll to some different presets. So there's an example of using this as a direct insert on a stereo track. Now, in addition to being able to do that, there's one other thing I wanna cover before we leave off here. And that is when using it as a send and return. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna drag in actually a different preset that I've created. You'll notice in brackets, this says mono send. Let's go ahead and drag this into my effects return over here. 
Now the main difference over here, as you'll note, mono send line out one. Now in terms of the return, I can bring that back in on the same stereo return. But now what's gonna happen here is if we take a look, for example, at our vocal track, and let's go ahead and make sure that we activate our external reverb send. And in fact, we'll deactivate these other sends as well. So now if I have a listen to this. Ya no me quedan ganas de gastar el tiempo. So this is one of the major changes that happened with Pipeline XT. In the previous generation of this plugin, there was no option to use a mono send. You had to use a stereo send, meaning that any time that you were sending out from your interface, you could potentially lose one output. But this is something that has been overhauled in the stereo version of Pipeline XT. We can now create a mono send with a stereo return, as I've done in this particular situation. Now, any notes that we make in terms of naming the device, or if we wanted to make any notes like over here, I could say, right, well, this is preset 13. I'm just having a look at this. I don't necessarily always need to import a picture. And I'm just gonna name this Marble Room. Now this is essentially stored within this preset if I was to save the Studio One song, or if I was to export this preset, this information would all be recalled. So in addition to being able to use this directly on a stereo track as an insert, we could also use this in a send and return type fashion where we're essentially using a mono send, but we're bringing back stereo return. Let's have a quick listen. Ya no me quedan ganas de gastar el tiempo Así que toma tus cosas, recoge, vete de mi lado now, in the case where you've created something and it's functioning exactly the way you want, one thing that we could consider doing is saving a preset so that this would then be recalled. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this for now. And I've already created this preset. So what I will do over here is I wanna update this preset so that it uses a mono send and a stereo return. We'll just go ahead and we will replace this preset. Now you'll note that if I was to take this and remove it and bring in this preset of pipeline stereo drag and drop from the browser you'll note that we have our mono send and our stereo return you'll also note that because i named the device that this is carried over which i think is a nice touch to be able to see your external hardware in the actual name of the effects plugin one other thing to point out is that if i was to essentially instantiate this from within here Keep in mind, our pipeline stereo is the main name. If I then loaded up a preset, either one of these, then this would still be called pipeline stereo. But when you're doing a drag and drop from the browser, this will retain the name. In addition to that, we can also store different colors in our presets as well. So if you wanted to have a different way to identify these different plugins, that's something to take into consideration as well. So anyways, that's using Pipeline XT in Studio One. Super easy plugin to navigate automatic delay compensation, and flexible routing options in terms of our send and return. Once again, I hope you got something from this video. Thank you for your time, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.